physical action already. Uh, yeah, Taekwondo, Karate, Sword Fight shit. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 um, this, yeah, this shoe, this was so warm and very tough. Um, I don't know why I'm still here. And, uh, yeah, uh, I have no idea, you know, uh, how I survived. <laughs> You mean like the schedule? Yeah, the schedule, yeah. I, we had two, two, uh, two sets running at the same time for 60 days. And it was like the units were staggered, so we would, like, sh we would start one unit earlier and work through lunch, and when we would set up the lights, I would go to another stage, whatever. I have no idea how we even. So it wasn't in any order, I just remember we were going through it until we get to the end. So, so touch you. from so many different cinema styles and stage styles. Um, can you just talk about how you kind of pieced that all together? I mean, it's actually, it's funny, because when you look at this thing, people look at it and they probably think like, well, what's, like, you know, what's going on in your mind, whatever, but it's, it was a very meticulous process. It took us about a year. We did a, a research, uh, I think we had a website at one point with 5,000 images of research we've gathered with the art department and uh, again I keep saying it but I actually mean it. There was uh, so many talented people. It was about choosing the right people. I'm so honored by the way that all these guys came to support the film. It's, is that more rewarding for a filmmaker to see people that worked in the movie standing behind it? I mean it's an amazing feeling. And with the art department we did this research. We, we spent uh, almost a year just kind of figuring out what we want to do and at one point we had uh, a full office filled with boards all the things that made sense to me in some way, in an abstract way, we just put them on the walls without really understanding how they're going to connect to each other. And it was one day we just walked in and looked at the wall and it was like this, 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 this. It all made sense, you know, you start connecting. And in terms of the camera work, it was a separate thing. The camera work um, was something that I had in my mind. I, I feel like a lot of these films that are being set up in this uh, visual effects work, they're always like set pieces. Like you never see 360 degrees, you never turn around and subconsciously it kind of disconnects the, the universe. So I really wanted the camera to move around a lot and to stay within one shot and do all these kind of things. And that led to the way that we designed the sets and thought about how to build them and all this stuff. The thing that I like about it as opposed to a lot of films where you see the CGI backgrounds in the scenes, everything is physical. And I mean, it's very stagey. You can tell, like, as you're watching, you kind of feel like you should have a playbill you're in the middle of a Broadway show. So I mean, kudos for that. It's incredible. I'm going to open up the, um, the floor to, to questions. So we have a question over there on the orange. Hi. Wow. This, the ensemble of hungry men. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. Chippendales is the next thing I'm doing. <laughs> Somebody was going to ask, but <laughs> I kept seeing the tattoo on my neck and I was like, shit, what did that say again? Uh, <laughs> it was a it really meant something, something at the time to me. <laughs> uh, what did we come up with, guy? It was a gypsy thing. Oh, yeah. yeah, it was a gypsy thing. And you didn't want to tell me what it is. I, I didn't want to tell you what it is. Like, it's fine. <laughs> I'm gonna go, so you went and did research in Romania and came back for this thing, and I'm like, whatever you want, man, it's your tattoo. Don't leave that on me, I have no idea what you did. Right, I'll get back to you on that one. <laughs> yes, they're in the back. Yes. Do you 
some pudding? <laughs> it, you know, uh, you know, our schedule, our schedule was very hard. You know, uh, when I was in Romania, uh, I woke up at five. Yeah, I slept at three. You for two months, <laughs> but you know, they're. Yeah, they were always smart. Yeah, you know, I did. Yeah, I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know, they can smile. You know, every time. You know. Yeah, but you know, I can feel. Uh, you know, they that they are always enjoying their life. You know, it, it is it is very important to uh, succeed. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, it, it's kind of difficult to express my feeling, but yeah, they're always you know, pushing me, and uh, yeah, it, it is is very good. Yeah, it was very good. Learning experience for me uh, that I could do their uh, performance. Yeah. The Japanese actors are more strict. Yeah. Uh, they are always uh, thinking about, uh, yeah, of course, acting, but uh, with the uh, with no smile. <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love this style. That was, uh, that was definitely intentional, but uh, that was, I don't know, man, we just wanted to add an element of comedy to The Drifter, and I kind of decided that The Drifter might be afraid of heights, and there's a little bit of that in the film. Uh, we really hammed it up on set, but a lot of it didn't make the film. I mean, the film is already two hours long, and there was a lot. We shot so much. It was kind of a surprise to see what actually ended up in the film. What, you know? mean the fear of heights? What? I think they got it. Yeah. The fear of ice? Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, but there was so much more, you guys. It was so cool. <laughs> <laughs> no, the DVD. Yeah. Yeah. And, and how long did that fight take to, to, uh, to shoot? Which one? Which jail jail oh, the, the jail fight. Oh, the jail fight was one of the last fights. And, um, and we had to do it all in one, essentially. So, uh... You nailed it pretty quick. You actually, I mean, considering the camera work, we had a few takes that worked for everything. It's like, he was in good shape back then. Look what happened. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> medallion like you know what is this like it's got the it of special powers it's like a, this is like a very western mindset in japan as you can tell you this thing is just important because it means something you know emotionally speaking and it's uh i mean it's like what it holds is like every samurai clan i guess has a 
um, a cow is the clan symbol. And what you see in all the samurai, uh, you know, all the, the logos, what is it, Mon? Could you just correct me, help me? <laughs> <laughs> So yes, I mean it's important, it's a traditional thing, it doesn't have to have like any special meaning other than that. And it's like your flag basically, you know, not that anybody cares anymore, but... Sorry. <laughs> we have to wrap it up, I'm gonna have one more question here, yes. Somebody's got to do it, I mean, you know. The first he could, one he could get a female actress to play one of the daughters, so. Got me? It's actually, you know, it's a funny question because I think like in all the revenge movies you see, whatever, one of the things that bother me always is, uh, one of my favorite films of all time is Once Upon a Time in the West. But Charles Bronson is like one of the greatest movies ever made, in my opinion. But Charles Bronson is like 40. I'm like, why did you wait so long, man? You could have done this 15 years ago. Thank you very much. Let's hear it for one round two. Thank you, Ghetto. Love you. And the camera's on y'all. <laughs>